Hey, welcome to Limit Break Lifestyle. It's Jono here, and today I have a very special entrepreneur who I'll be interviewing, Neil McCoy Wood. And he is a very successful entrepreneur. He has multiple businesses in property, rent to rent, speaking and mentoring, and a bubble tea business. <laughs> Half a dozen in property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And welcome. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is a very special interview because, one, I've known Neil for a couple of number of years now and we've gone apart and been working on our own things. And now that I'm at his empire, I want to get to the root and into the deep stuff of what, it make, what, it's, what does it take to actually run a business, become an entrepreneur, and really serving people who, who needs his service and yeah. what he's offering. <clears throat> now, let's have some story about how is it that you got into entrepreneurship? Well, the way I actually fell into this was that I was in the army for 10 years, so I went, I went, you know, like most people, went to school at 16. I left school with pretty much no GCSEs. And my teachers were not, um, shall we say, the most helpful. They didn't, um, they didn't encourage me. In fact, one of them said, you're either going to end up dead or in prison. <laughs> so that's what I, was, what I was told. But from my side as well, I've got to say, I was a bit naughty at school. I was always messing around. But the thing was, I was very creative. I'm a very creative person. I always have been. I did really well at GCSE in art and graphic design. And I knew that's what I wanted to do, like my father, a car designer for Jaguar. So I knew that I wanted to do something like that. But I was told I wasn't allowed to continue in education unless I had math and English and science. And I didn't have any of that stuff. So the option for me was the army. Mm -hmm. Well, is it the army or the prison? And, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite young looking, slim, with a YMCA beard. So I didn't think I'd do too well in prison. <laughs> so I went for the army instead. And that was life changing for me. It gave me so many life skills that um, I don't know where I would be right now if I didn't do that. And you know, it's not for everybody joining the army, but for me it really worked and it really toughened me up. And it gave me those life skills, discipline, integrity, commitment, perseverance, mm. etc. And the funny thing is, when I actually left the army at 10 years, I'd got a lot of qualifications. Yeah. So I'd got all these for free in the army. And I, I came out and I thought, just wait until I hit the real world. People are going to want to hire me like crazy. There's going to be a queue outside to my door. People wanting to hire me. Guess how many people wanted to hire me? Zero. Zero. And I applied for bet somewhere between 500 and 700 jobs. And in all that time, I got four job interviews. And I didn't get a single job. In fact, the only job I was offered was booking in sofa deliveries for some furniture company. Right. <clears throat> and do you know what, I thought, I'm I got to the point after nine months where I was almost desperate and I thought, right, maybe I should give this job a go. Went in for one afternoon and went, no, that's it, not for me. <clears throat> and that's when I actually went into the world of entrepreneurship. And how did you start your first entrepreneurship? Because I know a bit about your background in, yeah. as in online marketing. So. Yeah, so I, I went into... I actually met a man at a business conference, Davin Michaels, who's a good friend of mine. And he gave me an opportunity to learn about online marketing. And it was a crazy story because I met him on the Wednesday and he said, what are you doing this weekend? And I said, oh, well, you know, I've got some plans or whatever. But he said, do you want to come to my mastermind? <laughs> and I said, OK, yeah, I'll come to your, your, your mastermind. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll change some stuff around <clears throat> and I'll come along. So the next day was Thursday and I saw him again. He was like, right, you, you know, book, you know, you'll need to book your flight tickets. And I went, flight tickets? For, <laughs> what, what do you mean? And he said, oh, it's in my house in the Hollywood Hills in L.A., California. So here was me with like no money mm -hmm. 
and he's asking me to come out there and I just thought, you know, I can't do it. And I went home and I had a very good support group, sort of mastermind type of group. And I just said to them all, look at this opportunity that's come up. And actually I met my wife, you know, through Davin as well. And all my friends were like, do you know what, we're just going to give you the money mm -hmm. so you can get your flight ticket. And I was like, right, yes, you know, and I didn't want to take the money and, and all of that. Yeah. But um, I looked online and the craziest thing happened. And sometimes these things happen in life. And I saw these flights, <clears throat> 600, 700, 800 pounds. But there was this one flight for 330 pounds. And I thought that can't be right. But I booked it really quickly and then I was dreading it. I was getting to the airport really nervous and I thought, right, I just need to get on the flight. I'm like, okay, they've made a mistake. And I actually went and worked for Davin and, I, and his house is unbelievable. Opposite the Hollywood sign and <clears throat> the people there were just incredible. And I learned all about marketing. And I'd say that's one of the first skills as an entrepreneur is actually learn about marketing. Mm -hmm. One of the top skills you can have. There's actually two, I'd say. And we'll talk about the second one in, in a minute. But the first one is definitely is marketing. Yeah. Unless you master marketing, you, you're going to struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, the only other option is you get someone that's excellent at marketing in. But if you don't know what excellence is in marketing, you could hire 10 people before you know what's right. Yeah. And that actually took me on to the second thing. So working for Davin, I learned a little bit about sales. Mm -hmm. And I got given an opportunity to work for a sales company here. And I wasn't sure about it, but I thought, well, let's give it a go. So I went and worked for the sales company. And the first few months, I was absolutely atrocious. I didn't make a penny, not a single sale in the first few months. And then I thought, you know what? The guy who's mentoring me doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. he, he hasn't got a clue what he's talking about. So I'm just going to do it my own way. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. And I went from being the worst in the company within a year to being somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And this is a direct sales company, by the way. Direct sales is ruthless. If you don't make a sale, you don't eat. You don't make a penny. Right. And <clears throat> I started to eat again. So you'd be... <laughs> and eating is important. <laughs> eating is important. And then after uh, nine months or so, I really mastered it. And I developed my own sales system, which is what I teach now, actually, at mm -hmm. seminars and when I go and give conference speeches and the like. And that system turned me into the top salesperson, not just in that company, but in the whole syndicate of companies and actually most probably the whole of the UK for my field. And I sold £1.2 million direct within one year. Wow. And the record before that was 700000 No one had broken that in a long time so that's really how I how I got to where I was when you guys met me yeah <laughs> that's awesome and now <clears throat> what is it that you're working on now because you've got you know a few businesses on the side now so now after the sales I went into because I'd already done a little I'd always done a little bit in property and um, <clears throat> the recession was hard. I mean, you, you know this. The recession was so hard on people, especially in property. And I saw an opportunity. And the opportunity I saw was that there were so many houses that were just empty, mm -hmm. just sitting there, nothing happening with them. And I thought to myself, what if I take these on and just rent them out by the room? Because I needed a room to rent and I struggled to find one. Yeah. You know, as soon as I went for a room, there was nothing available. And I was running around to, to view-ins. And I thought, if I was to do that and offer rooms, I'd do really well. And that's what I started to do. Mm -hmm. So I'd write to the landlords, which is quite easy. You can find their details online. And then <clears throat> from writing to the landlords, I would make them an offer. So let's say it was a, a typical house. I would say, I'll offer you guaranteed 700 pounds a month. You don't have to do anything. I'll renovate it and get it back into a nice standard. I'll look after all the maintenance. You don't need to worry about anything like that. And what I'll do is then I will take management of that property and rent it out to local companies mm -hmm. by the room. And the first landlord I said that to said, yeah, here, I've got four. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. Wow. And that's how it started. And then the next month, just by pure luck, I met a landlord that had 16 properties. 
and he didn't say here's all 16 but he did say let's do a trial of four mm -hmm. again so four seems to be the magic number so I did a trial of four of his properties and then he gave me more and more and more and before I knew it you know I mean one property that you rent for say 700 pounds let's say add 300 pounds worth of bills so your outgoings your liabilities are a thousand pounds now if you rent each one of those rooms for four to five hundred pounds and you've got four to five rooms there's a lot of profit there you know the minimum was around 600 pounds profit yeah. up to 1200 pounds per house so you don't need many of them you can imagine that i grew this to a large number yeah. you can imagine how much profit there was per month mm -hmm. which then adds other challenges yeah. because you need to get really good accountants to advise you on how to do it so that Absolutely. was for me business i i I didn't really understand a lot of the intricacies mm -hmm. around tax and accounting and yeah. legals and staffing and the like. And it, it was a real um, fast learning curve. And I had to go fast because other people started to copy the what I was doing. Yeah. So I had to move really quickly with it. What other challenges would you say you have when you're going through managing so many properties or so many systems? <coughs> How would you deal with your, your stress? or, you know, your anger when you're yeah. getting frustrated, your challenges that come up, the, the deeper yeah. challenges that you have? Well, I would say the first six months of running that business was really stressful and really challenging. Mm -hmm. And that was because, number one, I was earning so much money from it that I wasn't sure what, what to do with it and structure yeah. it. And I was worried about how much tax do I have to pay? And, you know, it was so, it was, I've never earned that sort of money before. Yeah. Even in sales, I earned a lot, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of money. But then, you know, I was doubling my income because I had my sales income, I had this income, and it really got quite crazy at mm -hmm. one point. And I think the challenge was actually doing viewings and um, overseeing renovations. And from that, actually, I hired a property manager. Mm -hmm. And I took on a guy straight from university, mm -hmm. and he hadn't been able to get a job in his degree, which is very common, isn't it? Absolutely very common nowadays. A lot of people who are leaving university now, and I, and I talk a lot in universities, I go to a lot of universities, give a lot of speeches, it's quite, I think, quite sad that the lecturers don't explain the realities of, of the real world. Yeah. Because I speak to some of them, and they just assume they're going to leave, and they're going to get this amazing... Mm -hmm. You know, like six-figure salary job. It's crazy. And I actually had a, a girl come and work for me just for... She was only with me for two weeks and she was gone. Mm -hmm. And I asked her to do something one day, which was really simple, really common. And she said, do you know that I've got a master's degree in marketing? <laughs> and I looked at her and I thought, so what? I said, so what if you've got a master's degree? What does that, what does that matter? You know, I would never ask anyone to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. <laughs> you know, I've been into the, what, you know, my shop and things like that before. And there's been dirt on the floor or whatever. And I'd say to one of the girls, oh, there's, there's mud on the floor here. And they're like, oh, well, the cleaner's not coming till whatever. I'm like, what are you talking about? The clean? So I get down and I get the dustpan out, sweep it up and I get the mop and I mop it. Because this is the things you've got to do. You've got to be willing to do absolutely to the bottom level jobs to the top. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't realize this these days. They, they want to just go in at the top level. And I was speaking at a private school just this week. And I was, again, shocked at what they thought the realities were. So yeah. I gave some golden advice on how to get placements and, and the like and how to set themselves apart. And one kid said to me, he was like, um, oh yes, but I'm, uh, you know, whatever his name is, and my father's this person, so I think I'm just going to go straight into this, like, whatever position. And I thought, you're not living in the real world, because even if you go into that position, how are you going to know how to manage the people underneath you if you don't work through the, the different, ranks. yeah, and the, the ranks, different departments, the ranks, and the like. And um, so coming back to your question on the challenge and how I resolve that, I wouldn't really say I get angry. 
it's not something that's that's um we, how do you yeah. manage your your anger for instance your emotions because like, some people like going through your yeah process not everyone would be able to handle that yeah usually they would be overwhelmed mm. or they would come across things like mm. i've got this degree or i've got this knowledge or i know this um so therefore i don't need to do it or i shouldn't be doing it yeah yeah and that sabotages their success well it was quite unique for me because I remember when I was on an exercise once in the army mm. and I was doing the role of three people because one person couldn't come, they're on a course, another person was sick. And I remember the stress level being so high that I didn't think I could handle it. Yeah. And what happened, something just happened in my brain. I don't know what happened, but it sort of flicked over in a switch and I learned to just multitask to a, a, an extreme level and prioritize and I came up with my own system for prioritization and systemization and even shouting to senior officers sir ma'am I need this blah 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 I need this blah can you get me someone to do this and, and you know it got to that and I think because my frame was so strong in that what I needed and I'm saying to them I need this in the real world, that would not happen. Like in the real, in the army, because they'd be like, "Excuse me, I am blah blah blah." You, you know, insubordinate. It didn't happen because they're like, <clears throat> they can see my frame is so strong that this needs to get done, that they would run off and do something for me, mm -hmm. which is crazy. It's having you know? that human connection, really. It is, yeah. It's just seeing that you know you would do that for someone else if you was in that position. Yeah. So it's really the illusion that people are having these days that they feel like they would just go to get into school, get their certificates mm. and then come out with a job. In reality, some of them just stack shelves in retail. Yeah. Some don't even get there. Some are just hanging around at the home looking, applying for CDs that unmotivated, completely lost. Mm. And they have no direction whatsoever. What kind of advice would you give those you know, give them? Um specifically what in if they were lacking clarity yeah. and that journey they 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 don't know where they want to go mm -hmm. they feel like they've sold been sold a real reality of you know getting a job after they've graduated after yeah. their degree or after coming out of school yeah you know, some people don't you know, like yourselves don't get go to university mm. what, what kind of experience or what would you tell them to to go and do yeah, that's really challenging, really challenging because they've spent a lot of money, they've got all this student debt, that's already stressful. Mm -hmm. You know, in my opinion, I would say that money is one of the biggest stresses that we'll ever have in life. And you know, it never changes. It doesn't matter how much money you earn, there's still stress around money and worry around money because you get to a point where you then go, right, now what do I do with this money? Yeah. How do, do I invest it? Do I leave it in the bank? What if there's a massive crash? Mm -hmm. What if something happens to the pound? What, you, you, don't, you just don't know. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where you invest it. So, you know, you, one of the three asset classes, you can put it in real estate, you can put it in stocks and shares, you can put it in metals or, or other investments, you know. Um, but what if one crashes? Or, it's, you it's always a challenge. It doesn't matter where you, where you are. Um, I don't think people ever stop worrying about, about money. Um, but what advice would I give to those people? I would say, as long as you're in your first sort of two or three years since leaving university, mm -hmm. it's still going to be fresh for you. But once you go past that, once you go to five or six years, an employer, like if I look at an, let's say I'm putting a job out. Yeah. So we'll give the example again of that marketing mm -hmm. role that I put out. A master's degree student comes up to you. Yeah. Do you know how many applications I had for that one job? Marketing manager. How many applications do you think I had? A lot. <laughs> Between six and seven hundred applications. Wow. For that one position, marketing manager. Because I opened it up to anybody. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people say, oh, I haven't got this degree, I haven't got... I don't really care about degrees, because I haven't got a degree and I know my capability. And I think a lot of people have got it ingrained within them. Like they'll be successful if they're just given that opportunity. Like for me, I wasn't given that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think if I was given that opportunity at school where they allowed me to go on with my creative stuff, I don't even know where I'd be right now. I don't know what would have happened. Yeah. But, but, you know, 
things change in life and you go in different directions. So it's difficult, it, it is really difficult for those students and I would say the first thing to do is you've got to literally get off your butt and walk into the businesses that you would like to work in. Now actually walk in through the door with your whatever you know appropriate dress for you so if you go into a, a business type thing and you you got a business degree i'd be in a suit and tie i wouldn't be going in jeans and t-shirt you know i'd be going in suit and tie like you're serious like you're going into work like you're about to start work that day i'd have my cv i'd have a briefcase i'd have everything and i'd say hi um can i speak to hr or recruitment or, or whoever and if the receptionist said to me Oh, have you got an appointment? I said, I haven't. But can I still speak to... I, I would literally not let them stop me. And if they say, no, you know, you need an appointment, I say, well, you know, I, can, just two minutes. Can I just have two minutes? Surely, just two minutes. And that's what I would do. And I would just keep pushing and keep pushing. And I'd go around all the companies that I wanted to work for. Mm -hmm. And one of those companies is going to have someone like me in there that will see that persistence that drive, that ambition. And if someone like that walked into my office, I would go, do you know what? That's unusual. People don't do that. Kids just send the CV and expect something. <laughs> that kid has actually got dressed up. They've, they've come in, they've prepared everything and they wanted a job. That's serious right there. And I'm gonna take that person seriously. So that'd be my top tip. Get off your ass and start taking action. <laughs> <laughs> now what tips would you give to let's say someone who's working on a 9 to 5 already yeah. they got their job but they're not feeling they're getting anywhere they yeah. feel like they've reached a plateau where they feel I kind of you know got bored yeah yeah you bored know, of the yeah. most motivation they're not inspired they just feel like they're not really getting anywhere in life mm. But they want to do more. They want to start a business, for instance. How do they transition? Because a lot of people say, "Oh, quit your job." Uh, a lot of life, a lot of coaches will say, "Go and quit your job." <laughs> yeah. And, and then go out and do it. But some people would be, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fearful. You know, I need to pay bills. I've got family to look after. I just can't do that. How would? What kind of tr transition tips would you give them? Yeah. First of all. Um, <clears throat> One of the challenges with the, all these coaches and a lot of these mentors is that they give advice which is not always the best advice. I don't mean that in a rude way because yeah. I've got a lot of respect for coaches and mentors, but <clears throat> a lot of the advice they give can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to say, you, you've got to be careful and take everything with a pinch of salt. You know, I apply a test to everything and that is I never believe anything that, that someone tells me straight off the bat like that. Yeah. I'll always add sort of filters to it and think, is that, is that accurate? Does it feel right to me? And, um, and I'll do a lot of research as well. So uh, that's what I'd say straight away. So in terms of what you're saying about just quitting your job and going off, that is terrible advice. Do not um, do, not do that. Don't just quit your job and, and, and the like because you will have bills to pay and it can be very painful if mm -hmm. you're... Because businesses take a long time to get off the ground. And, you know, you mentioned the bubble tea business I've got. And 99% of people viewing will have no idea what that is. So you can Google it afterwards, uh, bubble tea. And an example of that, it's taken, I'd say, a year and a half before it even got off the ground. That's with no salary. I don't, I don't take a salary from that. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is I don't need to take a salary from it because I can take um, a salary and dividends for my other businesses. Yeah. So that's a strong position. So a lot of the time, the field you go into, you're going to be up against entrepreneurs that don't need to take a salary. And they can play the long-term game, the waiting game, but you can't do that. So you, what you need to do is you need to get into something that you can make some money straight away. But you've got to... Um, one of the things I always say to all of my mentoring clients is, and some of them don't like this, but one of the exercises I do... <laughs> I get them to print out their full budget, all their finances and everything. And some people really react. They don't want to do it. And that's their choice. You know, they don't have to do it, but that's part of the program. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and by the way, they've already paid. So there's nothing in it for me. I'm not trying to find out how much money they've got. <laughs> they've already paid me. It's done. You know, they've paid for the full program. And 
I'm getting into it, I'm looking at their budget and I'm saying, what's this? Subscription £12 every month. What's this? £20. £60 phone bill. Why are you on this phone contract for £60? Mine is £12. Look at my contract. £12. Unlimited. And I'll just go through and there was a guy last week and actually I cut £700 a month from what he was spending. Mm -hmm. 700 That's um, £8,400 a year saving straight away. So it's really about cutting down everything so that you're at a very comfortable level where you know you can bring in that money. And then once you're at that baseline, then you can go out and you can start your business and, and whatever else. Um, but the other thing I would say is, it's important that while you're in your job, you're, you're doing the business on the side. Mm -hmm. And again, some people don't want to do this. They, they would rather just do the job, they have a stressful day, go home, kick off their shoes, lie on the sofa and watch a movie with a beer or pizza or wine or whatever. Yeah. And that's not, that's not what's going to bring you success. I've never known anybody, not a single person that's got successful like that. What happens is you come home and you're exhausted and you say, do you know what? I'm just going to put in two hours of work up until, um, let's say you get home at 630 I'm going to put in two hours of work until 8.30, 9 o'clock. Then I'm going to relax for an hour. Then I'm going to go to bed mm -hmm. or, you know, however you're going to do it. Yeah. Now, the, what I used to do was after my stressful day, I would work on my business for three or four hours until very late. Yeah. And, then, and then what would happen is I couldn't sleep because I'd be stressed and all this. And the trick that I found to overcome that is I read a calming, relaxing book mm. before bed for 30 minutes. And... I'd read it for about 15 minutes upright, and then the last 15 minutes, I'd lie down to read it. And, so you're in a comfortable position. And then, yes, I'd start to drift off. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I put that book down, I'm out. So that's a little hack there. Because a lot of people tend to do nowadays, they go to bed, bring the phone into bed, yeah, and they start scrolling through Facebook. Yes. Then they start going, well, watching this video, then go on YouTube, and then mm. they're completely attached to their phone. Yeah. By the time they know it, past two, three hours later, they need to wake up in four hours. Yeah. Or three hours. Yeah, you're right. See, I actually have very little technology. So I have a laptop and a phone. Mm -hmm. But I only use that phone really for making phone calls and texts and, and doing a little bit on email. But really, I check my email once a day. I don't check my phone after nine o'clock at night. Wow. I don't because I know it's going to drain my time mm -hmm. like my sort of in terms of productivity yeah. my day is so structured by 30 minute blocks throughout the day it's so structured and if I get an email or jump on Google or YouTube I know what happens you start watching <laughs> one video before you know it you go I've just spent an hour watching kittens and cucumbers or whatever that's happened to a lot of people yeah. that whole kitten cucumber oh, yeah. video you're like what's going on what and then there's another thing and there's dogs and there's everything starts appearing the and there's pranks stuff. and all this and you think what well, i've just wasted all this time so i've got a rule now i don't don't do that on a sunday sunday sort of when i have my my time off that's when i'll have my fun and i'll watch this and i'll watch a movie and watch a tv show or whatever because i've earned it and just I've, giving your time out yeah you've got to have it that's important. Self-love and self-care and having time for yourself, especially when you're working so hard. What's the point of working so hard when you're not enjoying yourself? Yeah. And it's around what we were talking about before, self-awareness. You know, self-awareness is so crucial. And sometimes what will happen is you'll be walking from point A to point B and 10 minutes has gone by and you're there and you haven't even thought on that journey yeah. you've just been in your own head and trying to because what's happening is the brain's trying to filter all these challenges and these problems that you've got mm -hmm. and all these worries and stresses yeah. and that's when it does it it does it at night when you sleep but it also does it when you walk in and things like that or when you drive in when you're driving have you ever done that and you drive in driving from one point and then next I don't know how long later mm. you're like I'm at my doorstep keys in yeah how did I get here yes I had that many a times. Yeah, and that's not a healthy thing. Like a healthy thing is to sit and have that contemplation time. Just sit and relax. And some people say, oh, yeah, but I haven't got, you know, some of the things that you've got and I can't. It's nonsense. Yeah. 
There are parks, there are woodlands, there are fields. You can just go out, you can sit on a park bench, piece of paper and a notebook and really contemplate and plan your life out. Yeah. You can make those goals, you can think, you can get that clarity back into your life. And it's inspiring as well. I, every single month, <clears throat> at least one day, I'll go out to nature mm -hmm. and I'll just spend the day, I'll have my notebook, I'm old school like that, notebook and pencil, I don't use pen, and I just scribble notes and scribble notes and I sit there and I get inspired by, by what's going on and it allows me to look at what I'm currently doing as well. Mm -hmm. So it allows me to look at all the things that I've been, been doing and let's say it's to do with my speaking yeah. and I say, how is that going for me? And I look at my speaking career and I'll say, Actually, I've been speaking a lot in this area and I want to be speaking more in that area. So what do I need to do to move from point A to B? Yeah. And that's where I would do that internal work. And it's so important to do it every month. You don't need to do it every week like some people say. <laughs> you know, that, that doesn't need to be every week, but at least once a month, you've got to do that. Reevaluate. And yeah. The dots going back. <laughs> Definitely. Job says, right? Yes. And this speech, this quote has been used multiple times in the speaking industry. But it's so powerful and it's so correct. It's real. Mm. It is. You have to look back and connect the dots going, going forward. Yeah. And, and you, you really need to find out what is it you want to do. Find out exactly what is it that you love doing or yeah. what you enjoy or where do you want to go next. Mm. Definitely. And for those who don't know where they want to go, how would you give them that kind of clarity? Because a lot of people say, do what you love and love what you do, right? <coughs> But how do they know what is it they love doing? They do. What advice would you give them? So someone that doesn't know what they what they love doing. <clears throat> you know, I, th I think everyone deep down knows what they love doing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't subscribe to that. Like that, people don't know. I think everyone deep down knows what they enjoy doing. So whether you enjoy watching movies or going to the pub or you know getting dressed up on Instagram, whatever. <laughs> Everyone knows what they really love doing. And the great thing is, there's never been an easier time to be successful in this world. Absolutely. So I saw a girl who wanted to get mentoring from me. And I said, I can't, you know, with all the greatest respect to her, I couldn't mentor this, this girl. But I could see that she could be successful. But it was, she was the wrong type of client for me mm -hmm. because she wanted to do all this modeling type stuff and Instagram and, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I put her in touch with someone else and she did become very successful. Mm -hmm. And all she does now, she does her makeup and her clothes and all that. She goes to great places and she does Instagram photos and she gets, does advertising through it and she's built a career through doing that. So you can, you can literally do whatever you want to do now in this world. You can come up with the craziest thing and someone will buy that. Someone will give you money to do what you want to do. Absolutely. It, it's, it's a new world, it's a new paradigm. The, the bar has now moved and we've got all this technology. Yes. You don't need experts anymore to be paying tons of money. You can go and get that advice. Everything's on YouTube, everything's on Google. All the information that you need now to be successful is out there. And I think we should probably touch on some sort of books and, and, and things uh, yeah. uh, when, we get, when we get a chance, because that's important as well. And I think it's becoming a dying art a little bit, mm -hmm. books, because <clears throat> I remember when I'd left the, um, well, when I was in the army, I'd never really re read any books. A lot of people would find that as well. When they, yeah. Just after they finish studying, they stop learning or they stop le learning new books or learning new stuff. Yeah. You know, they just, you know, a few of my friends personally, you know, a few years down the line, I say, you know, what have you been up to? And they, they said, oh, life happened or what? You know? Yeah. And they say life happened. Like, what does life happen mean? Yeah. Um, and they say, oh, you know, just work toddle around, go to the bar every week or every weekend and then have a family and then they say, oh, life's taken over. I yeah. Said, what do you mean life's taken over? <laughs> I know, it's, 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 it's um, you know, um, I don't blame those people because if you think of animals, mm -hmm. right, you think of a, a herd of gazelle or wildebeest, whatever, do they go up and over the hill? 
or do they follow the path of least resistance around the hill? Follow the path of least resistance. Exactly. And that's the same. We're no different. People will always follow that path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you always get a rogue wildebeest, <laughs> right? That does its own thing. <laughs> the, the crazy wildebeest. That would yeah? do the same thing, yeah. But the majority of people will follow that pack because we are pack creatures. We want to be together. Even people that say, oh, I don't want to live in a big city. Be, I want to live rural. They go and live in a village. You're still in a pack. <laughs> you know, yes, you've got more nature around you, but you're still in a pack. It's very rare someone says, I'm going to go and live in the middle of nowhere off the grid. And I'm going to have no electricity and gas and I'm going to grow my... It's, you just don't hear it. I mean, occasionally, even people who are really, really hippie and they say, I want to get away from this world. What do they do? They go and live with other hippies, right? So we are pack uh, creatures. And that's, the, and that's the way. So I don't blame people who do end up like that. It, it's just following the path of least resistance. Eventually... You know, everybody gets that point where they say, I really feel that I've gotten as far as I can go in life. And yes, I, gradually I will get promoted in my job or the like, but I've got a family, I've got this, I wanna, I'm, I'm happy as I am. They're and comfortable. Yeah. And I think that's fine. You know, I think that's, that's each person's own choice. And, um, you know, and I can relate to it as well. So I got to a point last year where I sort of said to myself, I don't, want to gr I don't want to own more businesses. I'm happy with the businesses I've got. I sold some, I closed some, and mm -hmm. I said, it was just getting too stressful. Because yeah. I was running around seven days a week, morning till night, mm -hmm. and yes, you make a lot of money, but you're not getting anywhere in life. You're just constantly running and running and running. You become in the business instead of working on the business. Well, even with working on the business, you're still in that, that mm -hmm. trap. And it got to the point where I thought, I don't want to be in that trap. I mm -hmm. want to enjoy myself um, with my family as well, with my friends, because that's important. You know, actually, one of the models I use when I'm mentoring and coaching, and sometimes people come and they, and they might, it doesn't matter who they are, from a student to a CEO, sometimes they come and I give them a model and I want them to fill it in. And they don't want to do it because they say, what's the, what's the relevance of how much social time I have to how happy I am with, with my work time. Yeah. And it's all relevant. Every segment is relevant because if you think of it like a wheel, you can't have a 10 out of 10 in business and a 10 out of 10 in family at the same time mm -hmm. and your health and the like. If you're spending all your time here, your health can't be 10 out of 10 because you've got to, you've got to, it's got to be more like an eight all around or a nine all around if you really master your productivity and time management so it's 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 like it's building everything together and that is really i'd say the key to success is having that that whole picture perfect and what does that perfect picture how would how would you craft that kind of perfect picture with people who aren't healthy or they're looking for a relationship but they're really successful in their job <clears throat> or some of them are even in business. Yeah, you know, I've known a few business um, coaches and fellows who really successful in business, but when it comes to relationships, yeah, they can't even speak to or communicate huh. their their you know in the relationship. They just can't have that communication as they would in the business, mm. and they would struggle with that. And that surprises me because they're like, they're really successful in business do loads of sales, but yet they struggle in relationships. <laughs> you know, that, that is a really difficult one. And I, I actually struggled with that and came through that. Because you imagine I was at work and I've got all these employees and I've got interns and I've got contractors and I've got this. And I'm literally all day working at full capacity. Mm -hmm. And I'm just go, go, go all the time. I'm nonstop and I'm saying, you get this done, get that done. Where's this? Where's that? That's not good enough. Blah, blah, you know, and then I come home to my wife, who's very calm and relaxed, and I come in and I'm like, hi darling, <laughs> yeah, and, and you learn over time that you've got to just be like, one hat for work, one for home. Mm -hmm. They're completely polar opposites. A lot of people bring that 
from home, or yeah. work back to home, mm. and they, you know, bring out all the stress yeah. out back at home, and the people who's, affected, who's in the family would get affected from that. Yeah. And how would you tell, how, what kind of tips would you give those? Yeah, I, I never return straight home. I always, you know, if, it, it, usually I'm, I'll be driving back, and it'll be at least 10 minutes, but on my drive, I'm trying to just relax so i'm conscious to it so it's again self-awareness right. i'm being conscious of the fact that i'm stressed mm -hmm. and my heart rate's up my blood pressure's up and my adrenaline's still going and i really just bring awareness back to it and i'll take some deeper breaths and i'll just i've got my own way yeah. i can't say for everybody else what's right for you but I'll, i've got my own way of of calming myself consciously calming yourself <clears throat> yeah and then when i come in even if i am stressed I'll be aware that I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. But most people don't. They come in and they're stressed and they have no self-awareness that they're stressed. And what happens is one partner will say X and then you'll react with Y. And then both partners think they're right. They both will be arguing that both think they're right. And um, I learned something a long time ago, which is happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> so even if I'm wrong, I will apologize straight. You know, even if I'm right, sorry. Even if I'm right, I will apologize. And I because it's not worth it. Yeah, it's absolutely. not worth the hassle. You know, th there's no power in being right. Mm -hmm. You know. But the thing is, who knows who's right? Yeah. The only perspective or inter inter interpretation is what you've learned or what you know. But yeah, that's right. Some people, you could say. You have this problem, but you go to someone else and say, well, who's right or who's wrong? They would give you a completely different perspective yeah. or interpretation. And you'd be like, oh, I didn't look mm. at it that way. Yeah. You know, that's why I always withhold judgment on anything. Because, for exactly that thing, there was a great philosopher that once said, you know the, you know the <laughs> saying? There is no right or wrong. It's only thinking that makes it so. Yeah. And he's talking about morality and environment and, and things. Things that, back in the day, we would be ho horrified at now. You know, some of the things that happened in the, the Stone Age or the, the, the Medieval Age. or But back then, that was right. And things are always changing. The goalposts are always changing of right and wrong. Yeah. Um, so I just withhold judgment on, on most things. And, I let, and the other thing I, I learned a long time ago <coughs> is a, a phrase that... Um, Arguing with a fool proves there are two. <laughs> so I try not to be that second fool, mm -hmm. if I can help it. Awesome. <laughs>